Good afternoon. I'm Tanya Arneson, Senior Pastor of Jackson First United Methodist Church, and this is Food for Thought on Wednesday, June 24th. This past Sunday afternoon, my husband and I drove to our son's house to bring him a steak dinner for his very first Father's Day. His first child, a son, was born June 17th. And this was the first time that I was introduced to Henry David. I must say it was the strangest introduction I've ever experienced. I was at the hospital and was able to hold my first two grandchildren almost immediately. But Henry was born during the age of COVID-19, which meant his parents were allowed no visitors at the hospital at all. And they're required to self-quarantine for two weeks from the day of discharge. So instead of gathering this beautiful bundle of joy into my arms, caressing his chubby legs and arms and marveling at his perfect fingers and toes and kissing his downy head and taking in his baby smell, I could only view him through a sliding glass door. I took some pictures, but they, there was a terrible glare. His mother and I tried to communicate through the glass, but it was difficult to hear one another well without shouting, and we didn't want to awake the sleeping baby. And yet, even with this distance, I love this little guy ferociously already. I long for the day when I can express that love with touch and language and prayer. I have this vision in my head of what my relationship with Henry will be like. And that vision evokes great joy and anticipation in this Nana's spirit. As I reflected on this experience today, I remembered Paul's words to the church in Corinth. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, Paul describes the nature of God's perfect love. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. These words of Paul describe the kind of love that I will strive to impart to my grandson, patience, kindness, humility, gentleness, and truth, always looking for the best in him, never giving up on him, even when he disappoints me, I want Henry to learn about God's never-ending love through the love of his whole family. Paul continues his teaching with these words, For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide these three, and the greatest of these is love. Now I can only view my grandson through the glass dimly, but soon I will be able to love on him face to face. As he grows, I look forward to getting to know his unique personality, his gifts and talents, his likes and dislikes. In the meantime, I continue to have faith in the goodness of his life, in the dedication and wisdom of his parents, in the power of our family to help shape Henry's life in a wholesome and healthy way. And I will be ever hopeful he will grow in the love of our creator and in the fullness of God's vision for his life. This is my prayer for Henry and for every child. How about this? In the next few days, I encourage you to reach out to a parent or child you know. Spend some time with them if you can. If not, FaceTime or make a phone call or write a letter, an email, 
In whatever way is right for you, offer words of kindness and support, of hope and encouragement, of love and grace. Let us all mirror the love of God to the people we love this week. My friends, be blessed, be well, and let all of us know we are indeed beloved. Amen.